Hello and welcome to the fourth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own piano game app in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover getting the functionality of our keys for touch working and we'll complete the script for all the keys on our keyboard. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you can also find all the scripts and assets for this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So in this script that we had last time, if you remember, we just set all of our uh, notes for the low end. And what we really need to do is we now need to set it for the high end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of these variables right here, if my mouse will let me, and I'm going to place them just below. And I'm going to quickly rename everything as high. Now, obviously, the reason I'm doing that is because it is quite literally the high end of the keyboard. And if you have multiple versions of the keyboard, say like you've got more than just two ends like we've got for this, you can just expand it accordingly with all of your variables. It doesn't really matter how you refer to them. Uh, you know, you could have uh, Ultra C and then Ultra D and then Ultra E, whatever. It's up to you as long as each individual variable is indeed different. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to repeat the process of what we did uh, last time for all the other keys. However, I'm going to speed up this bit of the video uh, to near the end of where I've got it complete, because there are parts of this code which I do need to cover a little bit differently. So I will see you on the other side. Okay, so I've got all the notes in place apart from just a few. So because we're no longer dealing with keys and numbers, we would be dealing with some symbols on our keyboard. We have to address them and name them a little bit differently. So to set for the high F, what we need to do is do the square bracket. And we can easily do that by saying left bracket in the section where we would normally have a letter. The same would be the case for right bracket and then as we go further down you would also have uh, the hash here so if your keyboard is a little bit different you may have to do something slightly different uh, so if you've not got the hash next to your square bracket to on, on the right you may need to use a different key code but you can find the key code symbols on unity's website anyway so don't worry about trying to find them uh, but if yours is the same as mine you have hash and then the last key is going to stretch onto the number pad, uh, which for me is going to be keypad 7. The same also applies to the sharp notes as well. So the last three are going to be uh, at the end of the top row, and they are going to be minus as well as equals, if I can spell minus correctly, as well as backspace for me. And as mentioned, I will put all of these in the linked um, description and in the pinned comment. You can go and download it there. Uh, so we just need to change these. A, so we've got A on the last one, C, D. So this one is high F sharp. This one is high G sharp. And have I done that right? Have I missed G sharp? I think I've missed G sharp, haven't I? Yeah, there we are. So just the thing at the top. So make sure that is right. And the last ones here, I've got the brackets, the hash, and the keypad. So E. So now we just need to change this from high E to high uh, F, the capital. And same with this one. And then high G on that one, high G on this one, and then high A, high A, and once again high B, and high B. So that is, for all intents and purposes, the script complete for pressing the keys on our keyboard. 
So we now just need to head back into Unity when it has compiled. And we just need to kind of build all that uh, together with the keys we have. So if you remember, we already have all the lows set out. Uh, we just need to basically duplicate them and change them to the high ones. And I am not going to worry too much about what they're named. Uh, we'll do this as soon as Unity has compiled the script that uh, we've got here. But I'm not going to worry too much about the names, but you probably should rename them. So in order to do all this, I'm going to select all of our notes in the hierarchy, hold control and press D. I remember what we did earlier with the keys. I'm going to drag, so hold the left mouse button, drag down to here so they all stay together. And uh, let's make sure we have hierarchy the canvas in full view again, just in case. So these, although they say low, I'm going to rename these at some point. But for now, these are all going to be my high notes. So every, anything that has a one after it is going to be the high note. So it's just a case of dragging and dropping all of these, like so. I wish it'd stop doing that, zooming in when it shouldn't do. Just make sure we've got that right. So that's a, that's high E. Yep. So high, and then the F onto there, and then F sharp onto there. G onto there, G sharp onto there, A, and then A sharp and B. Now I'm going to quickly rename all of these. Uh, again, I will speed up the video so you don't have to sit and watch. So I'll see you on the other side in a second. Okay, so that's all of those renamed. So now if we go to our scene control, you'll see all of these now appear as intended. And just like we did last time, you just need to drag and drop each one of those variables into the correct place. And this only takes a couple of seconds. So I'm not sure if it's really worth speeding up because in all fairness, I'm almost done already with me waffling on. So we have everything in place now. And to be fair, if you wanted to leave it at the point it is now, I guess it, that's entirely up to you uh, because we should have a fully functioning piano with just our keyboard now. So let's press play and let's try that out and see how it sounds. Brilliant. It works as intended. So we now need to make sure the touch controls work. How do we do that? Well, we need to create a script that will allow us to touch those buttons and we need to set those buttons up correctly. So how do we do that? Well, we can still use the same script. So let's head back to our script and down the bottom, I'm just going to get rid of the gaps there that we don't really need. Now, the placement of the next bit of code is very dependent on uh, how you have your code set up. So you need to make sure that this here where we have void update, you need to follow this line all the way down and place the next bit after it. So you need to make sure that this is what we, uh, what's known as a new method. So this method is going to allow us to basically press the button itself and play, for example, the low C key. So in order to do that, what we need to do is say public void, and we'll call this low press C. So we're pressing the C button. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. So the reason why we're having this as a public method is because the button needs access to it. You'll see why this is relevant in a few minutes time when we do it. So what happens when we press this C? Well, we want the exact same as this. So whenever we press the Q button on our keyboard, we want the exact same thing to happen whenever we press that first key. So we can literally copy those two lines of code right there and place them in this method down here and save. So then once that's done, if we head to Unity after it's compiled, we just now need to do a little bit of work to make sure that the button functions correctly as a button. 
which means we now need to click this first key. And remember that is a button. And what we need to do is whenever it says on click here, we need something to occur. So how do we do that? Well, we need to click on this plus button over here. And you can see that we need to attach an object. And that object is going to be scene control. So drag and drop that onto there. And now click on no function, click on key control, and then low press C. And what that will do is it will apply the code that we've just written to this one button. So if we press play now, we should be able to click this button and it will function the exact same as when we press the Q key on our keyboard. And as I mentioned earlier, the way this is all set up, this will work perfectly as a touch screen. So this button requires no extra effort to work on a touch screen, i.e. a phone or tablet. So the next thing we need to look at here is we need to understand what else we can do to get every other key functioning as you would expect. Well, all you need to do is just create all those methods. So let's go through one more just so as we can get this correct. Let's have this as low press D. In fact, we'll do two more. So low press D and low press E. And like I said, it works exact same as how we have it above. So E and if I can type low E dot set active. So this one obviously becomes F. Oh, I've got that wrong, haven't I? Sorry, that should be D. I don't know the alphabet. E, E, and I tell you what, let's just copy that, do one more. E, and change that to F, change that to F, and change that to F. So you can see that we have all those different functions for each of the keys on the keyboard that is on our screen. So make sure the script is saved. And let's head back into Unity. And when we're in, all we need to do is just set all those other keys up the exact same way as what we did previously. So let's quickly go over that again, just so as we have that down and we know what we're doing. Let's uh, make sure we're on low D and we need to add the game object. So we click on the plus there, scene control, over to there, no function, key, and we're on low press D. Same again. We need to add that, but I'll tell you what, let's bring this scene control up so we can actually have it in a better position. There we go. So we're not scrolling up and down the hierarchy all the time. Uh, so we're on E, so we've got that there. Drag and drop scene control, no function, key control, low press E. And let's do it on F. And it is plus scene control, drag, no function, key control. F. So we have C, D, E, and F all set up. So let's press play. Uh, when it's compiled, we can test it and we should have. Excellent. All of them work. So then the next thing to do would be to duplicate everything so as it all fits with your script, all nice and flush. So once again, I'm going to speed up this part of the video and I will see you on the other side when I've written all of these methods. Okay, so I have written all of the lows and highs for each available key. Each one is now set as a unique method. Nice, quick and simple. So let's save that script. And as I've said, I will leave this script uh, linked in the pinned comment and description if you just want to copy and paste it into your uh, project yourself. So let's head back into Unity. And as you might have already seen, we don't have the high notes set up just yet. So let's quickly go ahead and create those. So if we copy and paste or hold control, press D to duplicate and drag all of those down into the lower part. So just there. And then let's have them all selected. Select our rec tool and let's move them all to this side. So now we have both sides of the piano set up. 
you should obviously take much more time in making sure that this is correct because I have just kind of rushed through it just to make sure everything can work as intended. And while we're at it, let's quickly go ahead and rename each of these keys. So obviously, rather than have L for low, we're changing these to H for high. And it's it, it just as quick and simple as that. There's not much more to it. So as I'm going through renaming these, let's talk about what we're going to do uh, next. We need to now apply each of those methods to the individual keys themselves. And to do that, we just have to do what we've done previously. Just go through each one, add them all in, uh, and all good to go. And the good thing for you is I am going to speed up that process in the video so you don't have to sit and watch once again. I know this, this part has been very sped up, but it's very, um, it can be very boring to watch in a video because you know what you're doing at this point, don't you? So there is all of our keys renamed. And like I said, I'm going to speed up the next part while I do the exact same thing we were doing earlier, applying the game object to each key and making sure that you click the correct method in the function. I'll see you on the other side again. Okay, and there we go. So we have every single one of those buttons now set up correctly. So if we press play, we should be able to click each one of those buttons. And remember, they are set up so as you can touch them on the touch screen without any problems whatsoever. Excellent. Perfect. So we now have the fundamentals of our keyboard set up. So what I want to do next time is I want to have a button that we click and it will auto play a song. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial and I'll see you next time.